Welcome to Achievement Badges with Michael DeFonso and Joe Yudis. Today we're going to be talking about Achievement Badges and how to utilize them in Blackboard Learning Management System and how to incorporate them into your uh, course. My name is uh, Michael DeFonso. I'm the Blackboard Trainer here at Buffalo State College. Um, I'm an instructional designer and uh, I help to train faculty members on how to better utilize Blackboard tools. And I'm Joe Yudis and I'm an adjunct assistant professor in four departments, which keeps things busy. Uh, and I am going to talk about my experience with uh, implementing achievement badges. First of all, why would I do badges? Well, creative studies is a kind of an unusual course for a college campus, but we've been teaching it here at Buffalo State for well, since 1967. I don't know how many years that might be, but a lot. And it's basically about thinking skills and problem solving. And this, um, this uh, academic year, the chair of CIS asked me if I would teach a course in creative studies for computer information systems majors, feeling that they needed to be creative in terms of learning to code and so on. And she thought it would be a great minor for them. So I started thinking about how I might adjust my, my beginning course, which is CRS 205, you'll hear more about, uh, to appeal to computer information systems majors. I wanted to connect the concepts of the two classes and engage computer students. I recognize that computer students are often very fond of computer gaming. And gaming involves achievement levels and challenges to reach the level. And I wanted to use this challenge, this to cha these badges, to challenge them to achieve educational levels. My theory and philosophy of teaching and learning is that there has to be a comfortable learning environment. For me, what that means is that I'm encouraging students to think, to try things, and to make a lot of mistakes. I even give them erasers sometimes, just in case they make mistakes. And a limit of 30 mistakes every day, and when you run out, come and see me, I'll give you another 30. Because if you're not making mistakes, you're not trying enough stuff. I want them to recognize where they are in life and that they're on the edge of adulthood, and they have to start making their own decisions and being able to try new things and being able to decide what they want to do with themselves. And I accept that it is my job to reach them, not vice versa. Lately, I've been reading this book, How the Brain Learns, by David Sousa. And it's a very interesting book. I'd recommend it for any teachers. Uh, what he talks about is that the rational brain develops more slowly in adolescence. So I think we all recognize that, that the prefrontal cortex develops somewhere in the mid-20s on average. But what he says is that the emotional brain system is what determines what goes in long-term memory. If that is correct, then maybe we need to start building in some positive emotional triggers to the content of our lessons to engage students and to get them to remember what they've learned on a longer-term basis. I believe teaching is interactive and it's iterative to engage students. You have to get their emotions, as I said, based on the SUSE information. We have to get their emotions. Why not put them in charge of how they display their learning? Things like rapping or singing or dancing to give, a, give reports. And then hold them accountable for the choices. We have rubrics as long as they meet the requirements of the rubric, they have met the requirements of the report. Um, some teachers are concerned that they won't be able to tell that, but I think uh, it takes a little imagination, but you can see it and the students can see it. And if they report in the, in the field of their passion, they're more likely to get engaged emotionally and remember what they've learned. I believe also that we have to communicate progress to students. The students tell me that they don't get timely information from their teachers. And the teachers say the information they give them doesn't seem to change anything and they don't seem to understand it. 
the nice part about Blackboard is we can give the information automatically. I feel have the potential for encouraging those who are not doing well to do a little better. Uh, some idea of how to move forward. All right, so uh, badges in the real world. Uh, badges uh, take us back to a time in our childhood where we used to collect things. Uh, may have been collecting stickers, trading cards, Beanie Babies. Um, gave us a sense of joy and accomplishment when we were able to collect another prized object. Um, and maybe this act of collecting tapped into our pr uh, primal needs from our hunter and gathering days. Uh, also in our childhood, we would receive recognition for a job well done. Okay? How many of us didn't love receiving a gold star for earning 100% on an assignment? Okay, so this kind of we're trying to kind of carry this over. Even though we're adults, we still have this... Uh, this childhood need to get uh, recognition and collect things. Uh, when people hear of badges, they usually think of the girl or boy, uh, boy scouts. Okay, members can wear a badge if that represents a skill that they may have earned. Uh, it may be uh, being able to, in the old days starting a fire, maybe selling uh, Girl Scout cookies. But over time, um, over time, uh, the skill sets have changed. So, like, I know one of the things, and I was never a boy scout, so I'm not as familiar with them. But nowadays, you can earn a badge uh, for computer coding. Okay, so it's actually changed over time to be more contemporary. Um, also, in the military, the military uses badges to signify an accomplishment that a service member has earned. For example, if you look in the uh, right corner there, that image, the Special Forces Ranger tabs a highly sought after and very recogniz recognizable accomplishment. Okay, just recently in the news, uh, they just had the first two female service members uh, complete the Rangers, uh, and all, even all the men in the military, they think highly of that because it's highly sought after. Uh, there's also, too, uh, military personnel can earn honors of wearing emblems or ribbons signifying their accomplishments and credentials. Uh, it may signify winning some sort of a, a medal, medal of honor, bronze star. Uh, maybe they earn skills such as being an expert marksman, a paratrooper or any number of other skills. Okay, they're very recognizable as soon as you see them. Okay, then we get into badges in gaming. Okay, badges can also be found in the gaming world. You can receive a badge for accomplishing any number of achievements from the very simple to the very complex. Okay, maybe for uh, finishing a level, maybe beating the boss, or maybe building a certain amount of uh, farms and uh, raising enough goats. Okay, it's designed to engage us and motivate us to keep playing. Hey, think about how many of us have played some sort of a gaming app on our phones. Um, next time you're playing, take a look and see how many achievement badges you may have received and how it affects you and motivates you to continue to play. Okay, then this leads us into badges and receiving alternative credit. Okay, a digital badge is an online representation of a skill that you've earned, and badges are becoming more mainstream. You can receive recognition for the skills that you have learned, and the achievements that you have earned. Badges can be used to verify skills and competencies that you have. Okay, there's employers, professional associations, credentialing and license boards, and colleges are all starting to use some sort of digital badging system to give some sort of credit for learning. Okay, Credly. Credly is one organization that allows verifying and sharing of achievements. These badge examples uh, on this slide here, they show verification from uh, Desk and Digital. University of Central Florida, and even Harvard for accomplishing certain tasks or achievements. So you can see there's a lot of well-known uh, colleges, universities uh, that are using the badging system. Okay, so just to give you an example of how it can be used, okay, I have a Credly account, and I earned some badges. Uh, currently, uh, I'm, in, um, I'm in a MOOC for Blended Learning, Blended Learning Blend Kit. For accomplishing certain tasks in that course, I received uh, badges. So for me, if I needed to, I could use these badges as evidence of my professional development and participation in blended learning. When uh, I went into the SUNY, Open SUNY program uh, for uh, becoming an Open SUNY fellow, there were badges for learning different uh, computer applications. And there were 11 of them. You had to achieve four and a final project to get the final badge. But for each of the ones you did achieve, you also got a badge. I was excited about the badges. I got all 11 of them. 
And I think if it, 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 if it uh, inspired me to do it, I think it will inspire students starting to see that your, your accomplishments stack up. Okay, and just to show you more, even more where badges are all around us, I'm in the Blackboard Communities Online. It's free to join. It's basically just community where you can get information and help each other out. And they have a badging system up there too. Uh, you know, this is an example of gamification where you earn certain points and level up. I'm only on level two, uh, unfortunately, but you know, once in a while I'll see the rankings and I'm like, oh, I just need a few more points to get to the next level. And in the Blackboard community, so you can see in the upper right corner, there's some badges that I receive for accomplishing certain tasks and missions on there. So badges are all around and they're becoming more increasingly used. Okay. So achievement badges, it's a gamification uh, technique that's used to increase student engagement and motivation. You can earn badges or certificates upon completion of specific task goals or accomplishments, and you basically that what you want the, the trigger to be. Okay, what do students need to accomplish to earn that badge or certificate? Okay, so you can, um, you can um, earn badges for just basic accomplishments or for more advanced uh, tasks or goals. So really, you should probably have a combination of the two if, uh, if you were looking to motivate students, but it's not necessary. I mean, you can have just the basic ones. Okay, so for the Blackboard achievement process in Blackboard, basically, Blackboard refers to badges as achievements. Okay, so a lot of times I just uh, refer to achievement badges so I can kind of kill two birds with one stone. Now, the instructor determines the specific criteria that's going to trigger the achievement. Okay, what will the students need to accomplish to earn this achievement? Okay, do they need to turn something in? Do they need to earn, a, earn an 80% on a certain projects or a 90%? Or do they need to earn, uh, earn specifically a 90% on multiple different assignments? So as you, as the instructor, you decide what that trigger is going to be. Okay, then you also determine what the reward will be. Will it be a certificate or an open badge? Now, to know the difference between a certificate and an open badge, certificates can be printed by the student, but they cannot be shared. Okay? Now, open badges, they can be shared to Mozilla Open Backpack but they cannot be printed. So you got to determine, you know, what do you want to use the two for? Now the default setting is to not allow publishing to Mozilla Open Backpack. So when you create these achievement badges in Blackboard, you need to turn on that option to allow the students to publish it if you want to. Now keep in mind that you might need the Blackboard administrator to turn on the achievement tool in Blackboard and also the publish to Mozilla setting at the back end first. So you're going to have to take a look at your uh, Blackboard LMS to see if it's uh, actually turned on or not. Okay, so creating achievements in Blackboard. So the instructor creates the achievements. Now, one of the things that we learned, uh, you don't have to do it, but we recommend creating a folder in the content area that's going to house the badges. Um, you're going to see, students will see the badges in two different spots. If you don't create a folder, all these badges, the generic looking badges, the default setting will show up in one area. It's going to kind of uh, kind of make a mess of your content area. So we recommend you create a new folder called badges or whatever, and that's where it's going to be stored. And we recommend you hide the folder to the students after you have created all these badges. Okay? Because uh, the, bad, the default badges, they're, they're really not very pretty, and to me, it's just going to confuse the students when they see it in two different spots. Okay, the next step that, uh, as an instructor, what you would do is you would go into the course tools and create, use the achievements tool to describe and define the triggers, select the certificate or the badge option, and then decide if you want to allow the publish to uh, Mozilla. And the next, uh, the number two, uh, you definitely want to create a link for the students on the course menu or in your course content area so the students can view these badges and achievements, what they've earned, what they still need to earn, and it will display the much prettier uploaded badge uh, icons. Okay, so once again, you're going to create a badges folder to house it, hide it, and, and then in the instructor view, you're going to go into Tools Achievements, and that's where you're going to see all the different badges that you have created, 
you're going to define the triggers and just uh, the description. And then you can also see in this to the right uh, how many people have achieved that in your class. It will say each uh, how, if there's 10 students, 9 might have achieved an A level, 4 might have achieved another level. It just gives you an idea of how, how they are doing without actually, and you can click on that and tell which students got which badges. Yeah, so badges too, you, you know, a lot of people don't think about this, but you can use it actually at, um, as a retention effort and at risk students just by clicking on the recipients. You can do a little checkboard to see where your students are at. And then when you create the student link on the course menu or in your content area, this is how students see it. Okay? You can see that they can see all achievements, and under all achievements, the ones uh, with the blue border on it, the ones that are a little bit darker, these are actually the ones that have been earned, and the faded out ones are the ones that they have not earned yet, but they can earn. And then you're going to see there's sections where they can just click on the earned achievements or um, unearned achievements. And this is where the students, if you have it turned on for the badges, there's going to be a little icon there that says published in Mozilla if you have it turned on. Certificates, you're going to see a print option, and then they can also see the different triggers and the criteria that... Uh, uh, that they need to earn to receive those badges. Okay, so let me show you how you can create the achievements in Blackboard. Okay, I'm going to show you how to create the folder or where the folder is, how to use the course tool achievements, and the badges link for students. Okay, so I'm going to try to share my application, so hopefully I can do this properly. Okay, so in the content area, the first thing that uh, we did was we just went to build content, content folder, named it badges, and when we're first creating the badges, we don't hide it because if you hide this badges folder and you're trying to tell where to put the badges in, it's not going to show up. So I hide it afterwards. So if I go into this badges folder, every badge that we create shows up like this. Okay? And the, all the badge icons, the images, they're all the same. So that's why when we say it's not very pretty, we really don't want the students to see this. So after we've created all this, we hide this. And the students really don't see, you know, if they earned or what are unearned. So it's really just more of a housing area. Okay, so from an administrative point, from a faculty standpoint, I go to the control panel course tools. And achievements is right up on top. And these are all the different achievements that I've created. And over here on the right, you can see recipients one. If I click on it it'll show all the different people that have received this particular badge. Okay, so it's a good way to track it. Okay, so if I just go to Create Achievement, and you can do it by Course Completion, Milestone, or Custom. I generally, uh, I've done Course Completion, but generally I just go to Custom because it does the same thing. You just have to name it here, Create Achievement. So I'm just going to name it Theta just for uh, testing purposes. Okay. And then you have to tell a location where you want to house this. So I just browse for it. And if I go to the content area, I'm not going to see that uh, badges folder because I hit it. Okay? I forgot to unhide it. But I'm just going to select the content area just for now. Okay? But normally it would be the badges folder. And then description here, this is where you're going to write down what your, um, what uh, earning the badge, you know, a little criteria to find the description of what the badge was for. And okay, that'll show up to the students. Then you click on define triggers. Okay. And then if you scroll down, this is where you define the triggers for grades. Okay. You select a grade center column and you can select any grade center column that you have created. Now I can select maybe uh, the blog one. Okay, so I want the students to either have one attempt on the item, or I could just say, you know what, I want them to score at least greater than or equal to, maybe I want them to, you know, earn a 90% to earn this badge. I click on Add Item, and there it is right there, okay? Now, if I wanted to, I could add a second trigger, so I want them to earn a 90 on the first blog, and I also want them to earn a 90 on the second blog. So you can do multiple multiple triggers if you wanted to. So if I add just um, the two triggers, they have to meet both of them. Okay, so it's conditional. If I wanted to remove it, I would just hit the X. Okay? So then I select the reward. 
and you can put your issuer name. So right now, by default, this is set to uh, SUNY Buffalo State, but you can change it. And you can make um, make the badge expire if you wanted to. I usually just leave it uh, expired. And you can select a certificate. And there's only three uh, default certificates that you can select right here. And right here, it automatically will put the name of whoever. And it will also put the name by default, the name of your course. Okay. So how you name your course is going to be important, and automatically the date is uh, inserted in there. Okay. So you only have the option for those three for right now. Okay. Or you can select these uh, six default uh, badge images if you want. But the nice thing about this is you can actually upload any uh, image you want, you know, PNG, uh, JPEG, and you can search for any uh, you know, copyright free images and you can even edit them. Okay. And then here's the option to publish the Mozilla. By default it's off. But if you select on, the students can publish it afterwards. And I can hit save and exit. And there it is right there. Okay. And if I ever need to edit, I just can click on it and edit. Okay. Now that's for the instructors how you create all the different images. And you can see I got several of them in here. Now what you want to do is you want to Click on the course menu. And I'm going to click on it, so the students can see all the different badges right here. Okay. So let me just go into student preview real quick, so you can see what it looks like from a student. Okay. And if I click on achievement badges, yeah. here's all the different achievements. And if I click on unearned, I don't have anything earned right now. I'm sorry. Those are all the achievements that are unearned. I click on the earned achievement, I didn't earn anything yet. Okay, so that's important to put a link for the students on the course menu. And it's fairly simple. Over on the course menu on top, there's a plus, and it's a tool link, so you're going to hit tool link. You just name it whatever you want. So, I mean, I put achievement, or you can put badges. Whatever you want to name it, make sure you spell it right, unlike me. And then you, for the type, you click on the down arrow, and you select its achievements. Make it available to users so students can see it. Hit submit, and now you have a link here for the students. Okay. So it's important that you put that link in there. Uh, Maureen, they actually, the nice thing about Blackboard, well, it will automatically um, give them the badge. So that's a real nice thing about it. It's very automatic on there. Okay. Can badges be added to the Blackboard ePortfolio? Jenna, I do not know that, but I know if you publish it um, to Mozilla Backpack, and then you can share it off Mozilla Backpack. So if you can get Mozilla Backpack shared into ePortfolios, you can, but as far as I know, you can't actually share it to the portfolios, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So this is an idea of what I used in my CRS 205 course. Um, I wanted to give them, uh, there's a lot of writing. It's really a writing intensive course. And the um, um, first unit, for example, has 14 writing assignments. So I wanted to have a writing badge at the end of those 14 units, which is going to be an important point. I wanted to have a test badge for each unit. And you'll see that I have different, uh, I chose different ones of the uh, standard badges for this. I chose the smiley face for writing and the check mark for tests. And then for a unit badge, I chose the one with the star. So then I had to put my own philosophy into this. And I identified these badges um, by color. An A was gold, a B was blue, a C was green, and anything else was below satisfactory. And you can see I changed the colors of the badges, and I put a frowny face on the red one. Uh, I did not want to give a badge for E. I wanted to give some encouragement to those who weren't doing well, so I left it at below satisfactory to encourage them to do better the next time. Currently, when you put these badges in, and this is something that I learned, this was a learning piece for me, I was doing this, I was learning it as I went along, so uh, they can 
confused. When I put the badges in, we'll show you in a few minutes, they're all over the map. They're not in any particular order. For each unit, a student could get a gold writing badge. So there would be four gold writing badges, and those are spread out through my badge list, uh, along with the test uh, badges, which also had the four colors, and the unit tests. Or the, I'm sorry, the unit badges, which are the stars, and those are in four. Uh, always the red one, the below satisfactory, for example, on the test badge, instead of a check mark, it's an X. Uh, for the unit badge, instead of a star, it's a circle with an X through it. I wanted a standard consistent badge image and color for each level of achievement, including for the full course. When I got to the full course, I didn't feel that those badges were now sufficient. I was kind of an overachiever. Mike showed me how to do this, and I went a little crazy. And I probably have 25 or 30 badges available. For mastery of the entire course, they got a gold cup. For excellence, they got a blue ribbon. For merit, a green ribbon. And for completion, which is the D level, they got a red badge but there was no badge if they received a failure at the end of, of the course. And that's kind of how I defined it. Um, I might do that differently in the future. In the results area, I'm sorry, did you have something, Mike? Yeah, did you want to go into the course? Yes, yeah. let's show that yeah. because that is a little... There's also a question. Someone was wanting to know if they can get a copy of the PowerPoint. Yep, absolutely. Uh, we will put it in the Western Area Club. You can post it on our website. Yep, absolutely. All right, I'm going to share uh, Joe Udis's course here, the demo course, so you can see uh, see how she did the badges in action. So I'm going to try to share again. Okay, this is how my course is laid out. There are four units, creative person, creative press, creative process, and creative product. These, we feel, are the four areas of creativity. And uh, you can see my badges folder down there, which is uh, not available for students. And if you would open that mic, and you, they'll see that it's, as you said, it's just the standard icon, not uh, the colors and things that I have used. It's just a way to house these badges. So if we go back to um, the content and look at uh, achievements, or you want to go into a unit. All right, this is um, the assignments for the unit, all the things that they're able to do and all the information that they have. Their test is there. Attendance is also a score for my classes because the classes are interactive and I, you can't get an interactive score if you're not there. So we they have a lot of material, a lot of places to earn points. If you go into achievements, what you find is, go ahead. Yep. Oh, it's just slow. All right. As I said, all the badges are mixed up because it depends on how I created them. And some of them I created, the, I, I created in order, but uh, I went back and changed the picture or changed a piece of information and discovered that um, they go into whatever order Blackboard decides. And right now, there's no way to reorder them so that I could put an entire unit together. You'll see that um, there's uh, the press unit test. Let's go down a little bit so you see another person unit test and press unit test. They all have the same colors, but in order, I can't organize it by unit at this point in time. I also want to go to one of these, if you would go inside one of these, Mike, and we can yep. talk about that code. Absolutely. Uh, product unit writing? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, one of the things I, I thought about is I didn't want the badges open at any, at all the time. Because if I opened them from the beginning, a student who put in a writing assignment or didn't write assignment would automatically get a failure badge or a below satisfactory badge. I wanted to wait until the absolute end of the unit for people to get the badge, all the badges for that unit. All the, the writing badge, the test badge, 
and the full unit batch. I didn't want it to happen during because otherwise they'd be getting four badges for writing as they built up their scores, for example. So Mike helped me build in a code. Uh, it was a, it's at the end of um, the unit and the code is called badge code, press unit badge uh, code. And what I do with that is when the unit is finished and I've graded all the, all the tasks and, the, and all the writing and everything, I put a one in that column for all the students and then the badges appear. And you can see that down here if you go down to the triggers uh, that Mike talked about, you see the unit four badge, score equal to one. So the badge isn't triggered until the, the unit is completely finished. I, uh, because we had, I had to do that also for individual parts, like the writing. As I said, the writing, they have 14 writing assignments. I didn't want to badge every time. So there's a total column for the unit, for the, for the writing for the unit. It makes a lot of columns in Blackboard, but I can also put those hidden to it doesn't confuse them. And uh, I know what's going on and how far we are. One of the nice things uh, Joe did, too, is uh, she went to town on this. Uh, it doesn't show up on here, but she did uh, get some icons and, you know, and I've done this, too, where we just use a basic paint program, and you can type in the words. Like, uh, Joe has this uh, trophy, and uh, I know you typed in uh, specific, the unit. CRS-205, mm -hmm. that's the mastery one. In fact, I didn't use that one because it didn't show up as well. So I have a, a cup with no circle around it and I put CRS-205 on that cup so that it's mastery of CRS-205. Yep, so you can definitely uh, personalize it if, uh, if you wish. Okay, so then here's the student view of the badges, the student link on the course menu. Did you get any badges? Me? No, I didn't have time to go into this one. Okay. But you see the mastery one up there, that's the one with CRS. In fact, of the top level badges, you see the red one, the blue one, the cup, and the green one, all have CRS 205 on them so that you are very clear what it is for. And the other thing I really like too is Joel kept this really consistent with the image and the color. So she kept all the person units, you'll see, uh, they're green. Okay. No, the person isn't I'm green. Sorry. It's the green is the level of accomplishment. That's a C. Oh, I'm sorry. It was consistent with the levels. Okay. Yeah, the the uh, the units don't have a a, co a a something that holds them together. And I think uh, when I do this again, and I plan to do it again in the fall for another class, I may not have as many badges, mm -hmm. but I'd like to get into using some images that are uh, maybe indicative of the unit so that it looks more, it's more like how the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts do it because I think the images will, will uh, organize it in a way that's, that will appeal to students. This was the first time out and I just used, I, I didn't know at first that I could put in my own images uh, and I just used what there was and recolored it when I wanted to. When you do that and you save it, uh, where Mike was showing the badges, they all show up there. Yep, after you upload it. And, but you do have all the unit tests. They're hexagon shaped though, right? You They're all hexagon shapes. Yep. All the tests are hexagons. They've either got a check mark or an X. Mm -hmm. And all the um, writing units, all the writing pieces are faces, either smiley or not so smiley. And as I said, I gave a completion for D-level work overall, but no badge for failure because I don't feel that is acknowledged by a badge. Okay, the, just before we go to the next slide, one of the things too that we do here for our faculty training, um, I just want to give you another idea. Um, so for basically for the achievement badges, um, I have a certificate, Blackboard Specialization Certificate uh, uh, course. So basically, an instructor just comes in after they've attended a workshop, they have to respond to a blog and we have it actually set up so it triggers an achievement badge. So it's kind of really nice because they have to take so many classes and you know everybody's busy and they're wondering, oh, how many courses did I take? Did I take all of them? 
they can just go to the achievement badges and they can see which ones they've earned. So they'll know, oh, I've already completed that. If I go to the unearned, I still need to complete those two workshops and those two blocks. So it's kind of really nice for a checkpoint and uh, record keeping also. And even, even for us, uh, I mean, we have a different spreadsheet where we're keeping track of all that. Well, we can go right into this organization and uh, all of a sudden it's right in front of us. Uh, so that's the other thing too. The badges, achievements can be also used in organizations. And the nice thing about this, like uh, Joel said, she really went to town on this and uh, she did a lot on this. But if she really wanted to use the same system with all those achievement badges, she doesn't have to start from scratch next semester. She can just copy this whole course over. And as long as you copy the content and the achievements when you go to uh, copy it over, it'll copy directly over and you don't have the whole thing. So don't think you have to do this every time, which is really nice. And I want to point out that this is not a panacea. It doesn't make everybody engaged. There still were students who failed the course. But I did students talking about uh, what badges they had received, talking about what they were going to do in the next unit to do better and get, them, get a bigger badge. And when they saw that there was a, a cup for an A in the course, there were several who went after it. it and I know I've read some research, too, where you could tie this into uh, some sort of uh, tangible rewards. So if they earn a badge, you know, you could give them extra bonus points on the grade or, or they can have access to a certain, uh, I don't want to say internship, but certain, uh, certain uh, perks in class. Um, so you can tie it into tangible items, too. I tied uh, my extra credit account uh, amounts into the badge system as part of the total because you can decide what the total includes. And I used, um, I used the extra credit columns as part of that, so everything was included. I'm trying. Oh, okay. You're getting to the end of where we are. <laughs> I'm sorry, we've got just too much technology going on here. Okay. Do students get notified of the badges, John? Uh, they, um, when the badges, um, mm -hmm. yes, actually they did get a notification that, a ba that they got a badge. In, in a email message? Or in a in message. A, and on, on the, their setting? Yeah. In yeah, their setting. I believe there's a yeah. notification on the home page, like there's alerts, but that would depend on if the students, uh, students have that set up. I mean, they can go to the achievements, click on that to see it, but an actual, like an alert or alarm, uh, probably in the notifications area. And, and of course, a student can always turn that off. So, but there's not like a direct email notification or anything like that, unfortunately. I also announced to them that uh, the badges, everything has been done and the badges are out there. You want to see what you did? Go look. And they, they do. They get out their phones and look right away. <laughs> And I, and I think, too, you shared with me uh, some students that come to you when they didn't receive a badge. They want to know right. why they didn't receive one. And it was because I didn't, uh, when I opened Blackboard, sometimes it opens um, a little bit down the page, and I didn't realize I didn't put the one in for the first couple of students. So if there was no one, they didn't get a badge. Oh, right. yeah. And uh, when they said I didn't get a badge, I said, well, you're a good student, you should have had a badge. And I go and look and I get, sure enough, I didn't put the one in. So that was a learning experience too, not to miss anyone. But I was trying to get them out there and get it done and missed a couple. Yep, and, and you know, if you keep it simple uh, and you just want the badges to automatically uh, trigger, you know, you don't have to worry about creating that extra uh, column where we have to enter the one. This was a specific case uh, that we wanted, uh, we wanted to trigger if it had multiple things going on. So I will do it again, absolutely. I will do it again in the fall. Uh, as I said, I will change it and probably on a smaller scale. I think challenges have to be attached to the badges to help with the uh, engagement, help get students involved in it. And I think uh, when you do it, plan ahead for the kind of badges you want. And if you create them in the order that they would might you can't create them in the order they might appear, but, well, you can. 
but we've discovered that even if you do, sometimes they show up in the achievements list out of order. Yeah, but it's not alphabetical, and it's not we can't figure out the structure. Yeah, but it's not even a, it's not even the order. We thought it was the order we created, but yesterday I was creating a bunch of badges, and somehow the certificate inserted itself in a different spot, and I just copied over a course. All the badges and everything came over, but they were in a different order. I mean, it's not a it's not a huge deal, but it is annoying when you're trying to look at things a certain way, especially the way Joe has it set up by units. Uh, I mean, obviously, it'd be real nice if we could reorder them and put them all together and keep track of them easier. So, I mean, that's if we, you know we can contact Blackboard and ask for an enhancement request, but they'll probably tell us it's working as intended. So, <laughs> I guess there could be worse things, but yeah, just little stuff like that. So. Uh, definitely, I would suggest if you're interested in this, you know, start off really slow and basic, and then kind of build up, build from there, and then kind of build it into your course. So it ties into your, uh, you know, projects, certain accomplishments. You know, you can scaffold, have scaffolding checkpoints in, and I think that way it'll be more valuable to the students. But you also want to give some basic uh, triggers so it gives students an opportunity to earn, you know, maybe. Maybe not everybody's a 90 student, but they, somebody needs a little bit of motivation to keep them going to, you know, to try harder on different assignments. So, uh, you know, just kind of mix it up a little bit. I think that's uh, about what we have to offer, but we are.